My name is Volunteer Ranger Richard. I've been up here eight years. I work in the visitor center helping people with questions, people from all over the world. Um, one of my favorite things up here are the bears that we have. And um, people come here and they are either afraid of the bears and where can, where can I go to not see a bear? Or people come and they want to know where can I go to see a bear? I'm here to tell you that uh, I've never had a problem with the bears. I've seen probably 120, 130 bears up here in the eight years. I've been this close to them, which we don't recommend. Uh, preferably two bus lengths or the 50 yard line on a soccer field or football field, 50 yards away is ideal. And that's, that's generally how you're gonna see them. We've got in this park and Kings Canyon, we have between 600 and 800 bears. The bears that we have here are black bears. No grizzly bears, no brown bears. Now I say no brown bears, but we do have brown colored black bears. So we've got different colors, we can pass this around. We've got different colors of black bears. The black bears can be brown, they can be cinnamon, they can be blonde, they can be black. Uh, only about 10% are black. But if you go to the East Coast, about, well, almost 100% are black over there. No grizzly bears, as I said, even though our state flag has a grizzly bear on it. So the last grizzly bear was killed in 1922, uh, just up the road in Sequoia National Forest. Hussein Bolt runs the, the 100 meters pretty, pretty darn quick. It turns out to be about 28 miles an hour. He can run 28 miles an hour. The fastest man in the world. You know how fast a bear can run? 25 to 35 miles an hour. So there's no way that you're going to ever cat, get, uh, uh, catch a bear or outrun a bear. Okay. The first thing that they, the mama teaches the baby cubs is to climb a tree. So you're not going to be able to climb a tree to get away from a bear. <laughs> so... Um, it's a good thing that they're scared of us because there's no way that we can ever get away from them. They're very, very strong. Uh, the mama bears are about between 150 to 250 pounds. So pretty good size. The papa bears, the male bear, is between 250 to 400 pounds. So big. They can move these rocks very easily with one paw. They can move a, a huge piece of a log by rolling it just with one paw looking for insects. They need the insects for protein. So when they first come out in April or May, they're, they're eating grass because that's the only thing that's around. So they're eating a lot of grass. So they're grazing like a cow does. They're grazing on the grass out in the meadows. Uh, then shortly after that, they start going to the insects and they, they start digging in the logs. And I've seen them digging in the logs, trying to get to the center of the log. And they're looking for termites or carpenter ants or bees or wasps, some kind of a, a crawling insect. Then as the fruits start to ripen, so now the raspberries and the currants are starting to ripen and they will go after the fruits. A bear right now just out grazing needs about 5,000 calories. When they get ready to hibernate, anybody want to take a guess how many calories they need? Because they're going to go to sleep for like three months. How many? Huh? How many? 10,000. 10,000? You're getting closer. Go up a little more. 12,000. A little more. 15. A little more. 20. 20. They need roughly 20,000. So they jump from 5,000 to 20,000 calories when they get ready to hibernate. So this is a blue oak right here. And it's going to have acorns coming, falling down probably around October, November. And the bears will come down here, all these blue oaks and black oaks and uh, coast live oaks, uh, the bears come after the acorns. And they get a lot of fat and oil and calories out of these acorns. So the, uh, they go into hibernation around December. They, uh, they stay in a cave or in a tunnel or in a hollowed out log for about uh, two or three months, living off their fat. They might wake up, go outside, go to the bathroom, and then come back in and hibernate. So it's not a true hibernation. Um, and the mamas that are pregnant have their babies around February while they're hibernating. 
she wakes up to have the baby and then feeds them and cleans them and then goes back to sleep then wakes up and feeds them and goes back to sleep so that happens until about april or may and then they come out of hibernation and they start going into the meadows and grazing the, the main objective when you guys leave here today the main thing to remember is do not feed the bears do not feed the bears and keep your distance from the bears if they get food conditioned or food habituated um, they get more bold and they'll come up to people at the campground and they'll if you're eating at a picnic table and the bear's right here what are you going to do you're going to back up aren't you yeah. and you're going to leave the food right here and that's for the bear to eat uh, after one year or two years of doing this, they get habituated. They get used to our food because it's easy pickings. Um, the, uh, the law enforcement will carry a 12 gauge shotgun with rubber bullets, which hits them and it's like a hard spanking. They've got tough skin, but it's a, it's a hard spanking. Uh, or we use um, paintball guns. Uh, so we try to scare the bears away so they don't get used to people and used to the food. If all else fails, and, and, and nothing discourages the bear, what happens next? We've got to put them down. We've got to put them down. And that happens once in a while. It happened last year. One bear was, was a big problem in the picnic grounds above the Sherman tree, and we had to put it down. We want to ensure that you have a good time in the parks, that you don't have any problems with the bears, that the bears don't get too aggressive. So you keep your distance, respect the bears, don't feed the bears. If you've got a zoom on your camera, use the zoom lens, but don't try to get too close. Uh, we, they're unpredictable. They're a wild animal, and no one's ever been attacked, and we don't want anybody to get attacked. And especially a mama with a cub. Keep your distance with a mama and a cub. Uh, once in a while, they will bluff charge. I've been, I walked a trail, and I got too close, and I'm from here to that building, and the mama thought I was too close, and so she bluff charged me. She goes like this. And my camera goes like that, and I'm stepping backwards, and it's scary. If you've never touched a bear, come up and touch this one because you're never gonna touch a live one. <laughs> Anybody have any last minute questions? Well, thank you for hanging around thank and participating, you. and thank you. hope you see a bear. Yeah. <laughs>